Okay, welcome everybody. We're going to get this started. I want to thank you for making it out on a Wednesday evening to um, support your student in their future endeavors with College Credit Plus. I know this is um, something that we request of you every year that you come out, you hear uh, you know, the rules, the laws, and the ins and outs of this uh, that is required by the state of Ohio that we do that. Um, we have a range of students here from as, possibly as low as sixth grade all the way up to 11th grade. So some of you have heard this before, some of you it's your first time. Uh, this evening is uh, brought to you by the high school counseling department. My name is Lori Moss. Um, I'm a resident of the district. Um, I did an internship here a while back. I've been at Eastwood for the past 10 years and moved over here to Bowling Green this year. So this is one of my job responsibilities. Um, we have a lot of information to cover tonight. A lot of folks. Um, it's an it's a, it's a intricate program, CCP is. So, what I'm asking is that we're going to be holding our questions till the end uh, for the most part. And then if you think of them as we're going through the evening, everybody should have signed in uh, when you walked in. If you didn't have a chance to sign in and we ran out of sign-in sheets, make sure you get that taken care of when you leave. And hopefully we're doing okay on these packets because everybody, every family, every student's going to need a packet. So if you have multiple siblings, uh, each sibling will need a packet because there is a mandatory form on the back that will need turned in and we'll collect those at the, the end of tonight's presentation. Okay, so feel free to write down questions on the back of that. My card was available when you walked in so that you can reach me through email or phone calls um, with specific questions and every student is assigned a counselor. We have um, Doug Niekamp at the high school and Amanda McBride covers the rest of the alphabet and then Morgan Ott is the middle school contact person for CCP. Okay, all right, so we will go ahead and get rolling as we still have some folks trailing in. So once again, this is an attendance-based uh, presentation so we wanna make sure that you get credit for being here by signing in. Okay. All right, so CCP, this, this, um, this allows for the uh, completion of the counseling requirement for this to go on. This is a big deal for a student to take college classes while still in high school. Uh, there's definitely positives and sometimes it seems like there's more negatives. So we will be um, covering all the different aspects on the right hand side uh, during tonight's presentation. You would have seen when you walked in that we have uh, our partners here uh, with us in the college level that uh, were available and you can meet with them after tonight's presentation to get more information from them directly. So we should have four colleges out there and we appreciate their attendance and support with this process. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. So how do we decide if your student is eligible for CCP? And we, we like to start off with seeing what their GPA is. So at a high school level, BGSU requires a 3.0 GPA. At the middle school, they may have not established a GPA yet, so we would be looking at uh, rigor of courses that they're taking and how their grades are falling at the middle school. So that's maybe a little bit trickier to, to decide that. And I want, I want parents and students to hear that probably 90% of the students that are taking CCP currently are in grades 11 and 12. It is very uncommon to have students as young as seventh grade taking CCP. Uh, it's usually a transportation issue, a maturity issue. You're mixing um, middle school age with, with adults off, you know, on a college campus and that can be scary for students and parents alike. All right, so we, we look at a GPA. They have to also complete an assessment uh, set forth by the college. This is not something that BG district determines. It is a college eligibility, which would include the ACUPLACER or the ACT. And we'll give you more information through the presentation on how to make sure those arrangements are taken care of. And then if a student is going to take a writing course, um, 
or a math course above college algebra, they would probably need to take a placement test as well to qualify for that. You can apply for more than one college. Um, our most common partner is going to be BGSU because of their location, but we also have a uh, DECA course that uses Owens credits as well. So each college has its own acceptance criteria, and uh, we ask that if uh, families were not able to attend tonight, uh, that they meet with their counselor. We are also recording this event courtesy of Penta, and we'll be placing that video on the website. And I'm also offering um, this presentation tomorrow morning at the high school in the Adobe Lab. Okay, so ACT. That um, is, you think is typically something that's taken at the high school, and it is, uh, but a middle, middle schooler could take the ACT if they wanted to. If you have a student that will be a junior for the year 2021, they will be taking a mandatory ACT test. No, I'm sorry, currently, the current year, 2019-2020. Uh, uh, you will see on the screen that uh, Juniors will be taking the test during the school day on a Tuesday, February 25th. That will be at no charge, okay? The, the state of Ohio has been mandating that for a while. And um, that, the results of that ACT test could be used for your student to qualify for CCP for the 2021 school year, okay? Uh, I believe an email just went out from Mr. Black to uh, students, and um, it would be very important for students to attend on that day, and then, like I said, that is free of charge. If you don't have a junior and you would like your student to take the ACT, I have a schedule posted here. Um, you can have a student take it as soon as February 8th, all right, but the issue is you will have to have them registered by January 10th, so that's, that's Friday. And that typically goes until midnight on Friday. The registration for the ACT is rather lengthy, and it's going to take about 45 minutes to an hour. They ask a lot of questions. If you don't make that January 10th deadline, you do have another, um, looks like, eight-day window, but that's going to um, charge you a late fee in addition to the regular cost of the ACT. So you want to try to meet those deadlines. If Friday or February 8th does not work, there is the April 4th date. Um, and we can use the scores from that April test as well to qualify. Basically, they're going to be looking at the uh, ACT reading score. Base score is going to be about a 20. So if your student does not score a 20 in the reading section of the ACT, then they will not be considered reading at a college level and eligible for that. Uh, if you don't have a chance to write this down, you can visit the website, and that is where you would register your student at ACT. Dot org, And if you are interested, I do have handouts afterwards that have these dates and the website available for, for you to look at that. Okay? Okay, so there's the ACT. The other alternative is the AccuPlacer. And the AccuPlacer is um, a test that is uh, put together by the College Board, which is the makers of SAT. The AccuPlacer will, uh, there, is, there is no charge for that, so that is nice. Um, it is taken at the college, whereas the ACT are set Saturdays uh, that will be um, administered over at the BGSU campus. So the AccuPlacer is not a timed test, so you don't have strict time frames to go through different sections. They are looking at a reading score also and um, your results can be available immediately following the test to see if you qualified and are reading at a college level. So what you're going to want to do is, for information on the AccuPlacer, is talk to one of our partners in the lobby and find out uh, how to make those arrangements because the AccuPlacer is not offered here at the high school. So that would be on your own. I believe BGSU is offering AccuPlacer as early as February. Uh, you can take that more than once, and uh, based on the results of that, could qualify you for CCP as well. Okay, let's talk about how credits work with College Credit Plus. Typically, classes are going to be three credit hours, but they can run up as high as five. So a course from 
college, it, anywhere from three to five hours is going to equate to one high school credit. If it's a one credit hour, it's gonna be a 0.33. If it's two credit hours, 0.66. Okay, so that's how that's factored. Um, each student is eligible to enroll in a maximum of 30 college credits per year. And that's over a three semester term. So a student attending tonight could, if they wanted to, take a summer course, fall courses, and spring courses, but the accumulated um, credits cannot exceed 30, and that must also take into account uh, the number of classes they're at um, at their school as well. So if we have, if they're in a one credit hour math class at the high school, we would multiply that by three, and that would factor into the 30. So we don't expect you to figure that out, but that is something that the CCP departments figure out and the high school counselors. Because if you go over the 30 per year, then the cost of that additional 30 is going to be on the family. And it, it is very pricey, okay? So we make sure that a stu student stays within that 30 or less per year. Students that are um, starting CCP, they can only accumulate over the course of their uh, middle school and high school careers, if you will, they can only um, have 120 hours paid for through the CCP funds. And then after that, then there is no more um, credits that are offered for students. So that's something to keep in mind if, if a student is starting as early as seventh or even eighth grade, that those credit accumulations will add up. And this also means from other schools. So if your student is taking something through BGSU and Owens, um, that will factor into that overall 30 and 120 maximum, okay? Grades are assigned by the college. We do no altering of these grades whatsoever. Uh, they do not give pluses and minuses. They give straight grades. And we take official transcripts from those colleges and those go directly onto your student's um, high school transcript. Grades are considered in computing Bowling Green's honor roll, class rank, and GPA, which also drives scholarship money and college acceptance opportunities. So keep that in mind. Grades are weighted according to College Credit Plus policy. So if we have an honors weighted course offered at the high school, the equivalent course that's offered through CCP is also weighted in the same amount. So the, the basis of that is, is that a student is not um, you know, disadvantaged by going off campus and taking something and not getting that same weighting. So, so we are following the law on that. And cor college courses are used to substitute or account for high school credit. And then Ohio High School Athletic Association requires that students carry at least five credits uh, to be eligible to participate in high school athletics. And if your student is taking a summer course, those summer courses do not add towards um, OHSAA eligibility for the fall. So you must be aware of that. Uh, there is a formula that we use to make sure that your student is eligible. So that's something that you're gonna work out with the counselor. I won't worry about giving you that formula now. Uh, but in the unfortunate event that a student might fail a college course, that will carry a lot more weight. And if they were only in the minimum of five courses, then that would render them ineligible to play the sport. So there is also that consequence as well. Okay. All right, for CCP, transportation uh, to and from college classes is the responsibility of the student and or the family. So please keep that in mind. That is probably a big reason why most students are able, they have the driver's license, they have access to a reliable car, and they are driving themselves back and forth to campus. Um, parking passes are given to CCP students for Bowling Green. You have to be GSU, you have to register for that parking pass with uh, the make and model of your car and the driver's, uh, the um, driver's tag um, versus an actual something that hangs in the rear view mirror. 
So there is no charge for that. If your student incurs a parking ticket, then that is going to be on them to pay that back. So keep that in mind. Okay. So this is, this is a team effort. This is parents involved, um, students involved, the high school and the college. We have the folks that are listed on this screen are also going to be listed in this packet and we work closely with them. Um, if the student needs help with academics, uh, there is a writing lab on campuses, there's a math lab on campuses, there's professor hours and that sort of thing. The CCP student is expected to get their support services from the, college, from the, the organization that is educating them in that subject. If they needed to get help from a teacher, then there's possibly a tutor rate if it's a high school teacher, but you are supposed to use the services that are available um, through that program. They're students that may be struggling or encouraged to meet with their high school counselor to get help, to see, to get advice on what to do. Uh, so we wanna stay in contact uh, with the CCP team for your student, okay? There, there are pathways that can be worked out as far as, um, you know, a student wants to work on a business degree and we're gonna start at BGSU. And so maybe we have an opportunity to take some um, intro business classes. Uh, but the biggest goal that we have is to get your student graduated from high school and meet um, Ohio Department of Education requirements first. And then the college stuff is bonus, but we can look at those pathways and that can be discussed during the scheduling process um, for your student. So, yes. Okay, so for scheduling, what I'm gonna have you do is um, in that packet is a letter of intent. That is due by March 31st. And keep in mind that um, if that is not turned in by that deadline, then it, your student risks not being able to do CCP. So it's a simple form that you could take the time during this presentation to fill out and then we will be collecting those at the end. Please hear me when I say that when you fill out this intent form, this is not applying to college, okay? This is just the first step. To apply to college, you have to go online and do that to whatever college you're looking to apply to. So please hear that clarification. Um, students must meet all admission requirements and must be uh, meeting all attendance requirements as well at the college level. Okay, so you'll see that that form uh, is on the back so that can be easily separated from the packet and um, it should be fairly self-explanatory as far as filling that out and we'll be collecting those and we keep a um, very close eye on those. Okay, and so those will uh, be collected at the end and sometimes students may forego a summer class or a fall class and they have an opportunity to maybe do a college in the spring. This intent will take you as far as spring uh, one year from now in 2021. Okay. Graduation requirements. Uh, we're gonna be rolling out scheduling real soon um, with our pack course description packets which explain requirements. Uh, so all students, even though they are considered qualified for college level work, still have to meet Ohio Department of Education for English, for math. For Bowling Green, you need 3.5 social studies, three science, you need to have 18 points over eight tests through the course of high school. And so you still have to meet all of those requirements. If a student um, does not enroll for or drops out of a course that we were counting on being um, qualifying them for graduation, then we have to scramble to get those passed. Um, 
What's common is that uh, we have a writing course that is offered both in-house or you could take it off campus and uh, that satisfies an English class and we want CCP students to be taking that writing class in that first semester of their senior year because if anything happens unforeseen, uh, they still have another semester to make up that credit that could be lost. So we're pretty adamant about that. Also, if your student is taking a course that has an end of course exam test, which would be basically American government, and they're doing it for CCP, not on our campus. We are still asking them, we need them to come and take the end of course exam in that subject area at the high school. So the counselors track that and we'll be reaching out to your student to make sure that they come and take that test uh, in the high school. <clears throat> Another reason that we need parents and students to come back to these meetings is that not only does the state change things from year to year, uh, we do, do make some um, adjustments internally as well. So current students that are CCP need to hear this very closely. We've been putting it out on email, but those that go to BGSU, you're currently on J term, so you're not in classes right now, uh, but you'll be starting in a couple weeks at the end of January, and you don't have your books yet. So this is the new procedure for getting books. And keep in mind, the CCP also covers that the district will purchase book materials for your student, okay? But that is the, the books are a, the property of the district, and we need those returned, um, or you may be billed for those, because we do like to keep a small library and try to reuse those. So. To order books now, you need to go to, and I'm gonna to go to the website as long as this works out for me. You go to our district webpage, uh, you um, go to the high school section, uh, over to the right, you're gonna go into the guidance office, and then you're gonna scroll down to the College Credit Plus section, and then you are going to fill out an ordering form. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so here's our, um, website and we hover over high school from the high school over to the right guidance office here is the guidance counselors and under oh it's not showing up i don't know how to make do you know how to make the show up? okay sorry okay so um yes yeah, so then there is a link called information and textbook ordering. You tap on that link and it goes to explain the textbook procedure and then another link for the order form through there. If you need, if you need help, talk to your counselor. We can walk it through with you over the phone. The student can come in. Um, you will need to fill out one form per book. So keep that in mind where it's not able to handle multiple books. Okay, so that is brand, brand new. We're trying to uh, streamline our book ordering um, process. And so we're gonna give this a try and hopefully that can work out. All right. Okay, this is also something fairly new. Uh, starting uh, summer of the 2018-2019 school year, they uh, had some courses that they took out for eligibility. And those include applied courses, which means that they are, a student would be receiving one-on-one -on -one instruction. So that is no longer allowed under CCP law. The next one is uh, ones with course fees that are high, as an example of $750. Study abroad courses are not allowed for, for CCP students. Physical education classes, once was allowed, it is not allowed anymore. Those will have to be um, completed at the high school level, so no more yoga or trampoline and tumbling at the college, okay? Anything that's pass-fail or receives an S or a US is not allowed. And the advisors at the college will know this, so they won't get your student in one of these classes. They, they, they will know these things. Uh, remedial courses, basically if you're in a remedial class, that's equivalent to high school. So why would we be paying money 
for you to take a college class when it really wasn't a college class. And then uh, sectarian religious courses are also not allowed. So I want to make sure that you have that information. OK. Attendance must be adhered to. Um, you need to work out if you, a lot of students have a blended schedule. So they may go to BGSU campus maybe in the morning, and then they come to the high school for the afternoon, and then they transition into their practice. Uh, that's probably a common blended schedule. Uh, they need to account for if we have a two hour delay and it pushes back the high school schedule and how that looks, uh, when final exams are and that sort of thing. Uh, keep in mind that I know for this year, I haven't checked in the next year that the BGSU spring break and the district break uh, do not line up, okay? So a student would still need to be in one school or the other, and they will not be able to take a clean break to, say, Florida and, and not miss classes in at least something. So please keep that in mind. Uh, it did line up at one time. I know this year it does not. I'm not sure about next year, um, but that is something to think of. Weather-related issues, okay, you know that we are a large district and we cover a lot of square miles and even different weather patterns exist in different parts of our, of our school district. That does not happen at the university level. So if a student is traveling to Owens and there's ice on the road or there's fog, um, more than likely those classes will not be canceled, they will not be delayed. So your student is still expected to get a ride or transport themselves under adverse weather conditions, okay? Okay, CCP probation and payment process. We never like to um, talk about these things, but you need to be aware of, of the downfalls of CCP. Uh, the state has what's called an underperforming status. And what that means is if your student's g college, college only, GPA, it has nothing to do with the high school grades, drops below a 2.0, then they are considered an underperforming student. Or if they would happen to withdraw or receive no credit from two or more courses, they are also considered underperforming, okay? If that is the case under one semester, then they may enroll in only one CCP course that following semester in an effort to get up their GPA, okay? If a student is still underperforming after two consecutive terms, the student is deemed ineligible and placed on CCP dismissal status. So what that means is, is that they're gonna have two semesters back to back, their grades are not good, um, they've had to pay the district back for the course. We, we can't continue this non-successful pattern, okay? They need to get back into regular classes where they are successful, where they are passing, and not, not running up a huge bill, okay? So for the example of this, if a student receives an F or an NC, so no credit, one of, a, one of BGSU's writing courses, if you get a D, that is considered a no credit, that is considered basically an F, but it does not hurt your GPA. You will still owe the district back money. All right, so this is BGSU specific. If it's a three credit hour course, um, it costs us $150 per credit. You're looking at owing us back $450. If it's two three credit hour classes, you're gonna double that at $900 that you're gonna owe back to us, okay? We do not wanna get ourselves in that situation, but it happens, unfortunately. It seems to happen at least once every fall and every spring, okay? And then once you do fail a class, you are not allowed to take that same class over again, okay? And this is for the protection of the student because the severity of having a low college GPA is very impactful. If they're trying to get into a program and the program requires them to have a 3.0 or 3.5 and they're starting off with a 1.5, 
Um, that is not a good way to get their college transcripts started. So you need to hear me when I say this, that some kids just do not realize the impact of that because they don't necessarily know what field they're going into, but it, it can be very severe. And you're looking to have that student repeat these classes so that they can turn these Fs into a better grade and up that um, GPA. Okay. Social responsibilities. Uh, basically, we, we need to follow all the rules of the handbook. Um, and we talked about athletic eligibility. And just because you, know, you are a college student does not mean that you will get accepted into that college upon graduation. So we need to keep, keep that in mind. OK, so the advantages and disadvantages. Advantages are pretty clear. Um, you can you know, get a range of different type of courses. You can know what it feels like to be a college student uh, and have that experience, reduce your college education costs, and uh, fulfill high school graduation at the same time. But you will, see, you will see that our disadvantages are, there's many more listed. Um, students are not going to give a high school student any special treatment because they are CCP. Um, they will be held at the same or even higher accountability level. Students may be um, exposed to adult content. We have no control over the uh, type of individuals that your student will run into walking into and from class or being in class uh, because a college is set up to educate adults, not um, adolescents. Uh, there may be less activities time for activities because of the amount of studying required, um, the eligibility, failure um, of a class may affect college acceptance for the future, we said that. And also, keep in mind, under FERPA law, your student is not required to tell you their grades, okay? So there's no reporting, there's no progress book to look up. There's no notifications on your phone if their grade starts to decline. And this has happened, and when students do fail th through CCP, it seems like they shut down, they internalize, um, they don't necessarily communicate this, um, which is unfortunate. So just keep in mind that even though they are an adolescent, the school is not required to notify you of low grades in these courses, okay? All right, other things to consider. We have other college credit opportunities that are not CCP that might be a better fit for your student. We have advanced placement classes, also known as AP. This is an opportunity for a student to take a college level course over nine months, not just within one semester. Um, AP is created by the college board, which is the same as AccuPlacer and SAT. You are able to earn college credits through an AP score. Um, you take the class. At the end of the class, you take a test. You earn um, a score based on a point system, one through five. And then basically, as long as you are earning, a, for the most part, a three to a five, you will earn college credit. Um, a three does not equate to a grade, so it's just simply a credit, so it's not going to hurt your student's college GPA. Um, there is a cost to take the test, but if you would happen to fail the class, you don't pay for the class at the $450 cost that you would through CCP. Um, it is applicable to both public and private colleges. And for some highly competitive schools, it actually seems to be more transferable um, than CCP courses. CCP is transferable, but it's not always transferable in the way that uh, we want it to be. It can be general ed credits, not specific to uh, math or science or that student's major. Okay. We currently uh, we'll be offering seven AP classes for the 2021 school year. So I think that that is definitely something to consider taught by high school students during the high school day. 
Another opportunity is through dual enrollment. So what does that mean? That means a high school teacher is qualified to teach at both the high school level and the college level. So some examples we have there are the writ or writing 1110 and the 1120. Those are issued by BGSU. So those are writing courses that are right there in the school day. Communications, 1100, and then two different French courses, 2010 and 2020. And then DECA offers, if you are a DECA student, then you get the opportunity to earn some business credits um, through um, Owens. So those are all done in-house. That does not require um, you to go off campus to earn those credits. So what does it mean to be college ready? Because your student can be smart, they can be hardworking, and uh, they can definitely qualify. But do they have the emotional maturity to handle college level work? When you begin a college class, you're given a syllabus. So you're given all of this work that's expected of you for the next uh, 15 weeks. So that can seem overwhelming. They have to pace themselves. They have to understand um, how to have a schedule and how to be accountable for when things are due. So the time management and the organizational skills are huge and your student's gonna need to have that. And keep in mind that if, you're, if your student is not earning the GPA and making the satisfactory academic progress, so if they are on probation, it could affect their ability to acquire financial aid. All right, so there's implications when your student becomes a senior and they fill out, you fill out the FAFSA. We have a whole nother information night about that. Um, that they will not be eligible for financial aid because they are not making adequate progress. So that's another reason why the probation is in place and students then would be limited from continuing to um, take classes that they're not being successful with. So the differences between high school and college is basically the in-class in time versus the out-of-class uh, amount of work that they need to do. So typically, if a, if a course at the college level is three credit hours, they're going to be sitting in class for three hours. So that's usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one hour each day, or a Tuesday, Thursday, one and a half hours, two days a week. So for every hour that they're in class, could, they could be required to spend two more hours outside of class um, doing the homework for that. So, so that's gonna be a lot more out of class work. So three hour class, three credit hour class could be six to nine hours of homework per week. Some of it can be extensive reading, extensive writing. Also keep in mind that there's not typically points given for attendance. You don't get extra credit points by bringing tissues to class, okay? Um, it could be based on two tests and a final exam. So that is not a lot of points. And if your student's used to making up four grades by all of those extra points, that is not something that happens in college and that they might not be quite ready for that. And they may not earn the grades that they were hoping to get. All right. Uh, they have to gain the information themselves. They have to communicate with professors directly, meet with them if they have questions, and um, a lot more independent thinking and maneuvering around campus and that sort of thing. All right. So um, we're wrapping some of this up. So what we do next, the next step is, like I said, we're going to be submitting that that letter of intent, um, because if they don't use it, then you, you just, it's no big deal. It's been one piece of paper that you've given us, uh, but they're covered. So you're gonna turn that in. If you wanna think about it and talk to your student, you can. Uh, you would get that to the middle school office if they're in middle school, or the high school counseling office. Mrs. Hirschberger can collect those for the high school counselors. Um, the next step is the placement test. We talked about that, ACT or AccuPlacer. Um, and then applying to the college. So 
all college applications are done through their website and they need to apply as a CCP student, not as an incoming freshman. So there's definitely clarification with that. If a student is not sure how to go about that, they are welcome to come and see the counselor and, and have a, we can walk them through that with them together, okay? Um, after the acceptance and, and everything goes through, then they're gonna look to schedule and then they will need to contact their counselor to make sure that their schedule blends in with what their high school classes are going to look like. So, um, and, and that can be you know, tricky and there's a lot of communication back and forth, including over the summer for, for the fall. And um, as, as the master schedule for the high school is usually created over the summer, uh, we'll have those answers for students uh, by August before they would start their first day of class. All right. So keep in mind that we have our partners out in the lobby for AccuPlacer questions. Um, they have examples of courses that can be taken um, that may interest your student. Those can be grabbed out there by those folks. And then we have the counseling team and how to reach them. That's also through our website. We have folks at the, Ohio Department of Education level that are experts in this area. 